Warning, this audio drama will contain dark themes that might not be suitable for all audiences. Listener's discretion is advised. The autumn frost blew over the western region of Annualia. It was enough for Snowbell to venture outside Evergreen Town. She wore a slight variation of her lavender-colored snowdress, with sleeves covering her arms and dark purple stockings. She strolled through the dark, bedeviled forest, carrying a woven basket in her hand. She took a deep breath as she marveled at the unfamiliar territory, taking in all its splendor. I wonder where the next town is. Suddenly, a pair of voices screamed in the distance. No, wait! Please, Mr. Pones! I'm sorry, I won't invade your cemetery again! Bloody oath you won't, cause I'm gonna beat the devil out of you and lock your body in a casket with the others! Snowball rushed over to the source of the commotion. She peered through the bushes and saw an old man towering over a small, helpless squirrel. The old man was so pale and wrinkled that it seemed to sink into his facial bones. His right eye was missing, being replaced with three sharp claw marks. His teeth were rotting golden yellow, some seeming to have been broken or fallen out. He had long, blonde, white hair that was kept in a ponytail and sported a worn brown hat. His teal jacket, salmon shirt, and boysenberry pants were also shredded, and his shoes had enough holes to make his toes stick out. The squirrel, with the hairs of their bushy tail risen with fear, was cornered on the ground, recoiling from the old man, Bones, as he stomped forward with a shovel. No! No, please! No! (gasps) Bones lifted the shovel, ready to strike. Nighty night, (laughs) ratbag! But before he could swing it down, Snowbell rushed out of the bush and stood in front of the squirrel. Now what in tarnation is going on around here? What the? Get out of the way, Sheila! I'm trying to murder a bloke here! But please, miss, run. He's a monster. He'll hurt you. I don't care if he's the devil incarnate. I ain't gonna tolerate someone pushing around a helpless soul. You better get on out of here, okay, cousin? No, I'm not leaving you out here with him. You don't even know what he could do to someone like you. (laughs) Oh, ain't that beaut. Thinking you. And stand up to me and protect this sad excuse of a mortal. <laughs> I could just kiss those frozen lips of yours. <gasps> now you look here. You don't just grab a lady without her consent. Ugh, not that I would ever lay my lips on a crusty old snake like you. You're nothing but a bully and a pervert. A dead cat! Run! The squirrel grabbed Snowbell by the wrist and dragged her away from Bones. The sudden jerk left her feet blazing as she followed them. Oh, a bully, a pervert, and a filthy man to boot! Why is he wanting to hurt you anyway? My friend dared me to go into the cemetery to see if the grave robber was real. And when I found him, I, I tripped on a twig and, and he saw me. I tried to run, but but he's really fast. Get back here, you maggots! See what I mean? Well, I think this bully needs to cool off. Snowbell took off one of her mittens and shot some ice at Bones' leg. (laughs) The old man's speed halted as the ice traveled from his shin to his knee, keeping him stuck to the ground. He took his shovel and slammed into it. The ice cracked at the first strike, then disintegrated into the blade, making it radiate bright blue. Oh no, he copied your ice powers! Look out! Snowbell quickly pulled the squirrel and herself into a clearing to dodge the ice beam Bones replicated. I've never seen anyone do that before! What kind of man is he? He's an elemental thief. He wears an amulet that can absorb other people's abilities and use it against them. Bones picked his pace back up as he continued blitzing the ice. Not Sheila! But you want to know better than to mess with me! He tapped on his amulet, which reflected the same icy blue glow as the shovel. Once his weapon energy increased, Bones fired a larger blast of ice at the clearing. 
Out of desperation, Snowbell hopped out and generated an ice dome to shield her and the squirrel. Though the blast was strong, her dome was stronger. Her hands remained raised as she turned to the squirrel. You're just gonna get hurt if you stick around. You just get going and I'll try to talk some sense into him. As much as they wanted to protest, the squirrel knew Snowbell was right. Letting out a reluctant sigh, they slowly stepped back. Thank you, miss. God bless you. And with that, they ran off as fast as they could into the forest. Meanwhile, Bones had caught up to Snowbell, standing 20 feet away from her ice dome. He smirked with lust as he slowly approached her. Nowhere to run now, princess. I've got you right where I want you. Snowbell waved her hands away, dissolving the dome into the ground. Listen, I don't want to fight you, mister. I was just helping out a soul in need. Why don't you just explain why you're being so horrible to them? Uh, maybe I can understand better if I got both sides. Sweetie, if you didn't want to fight me, you shouldn't have slapped me. Even then, it's rude to be a sticky beak with other people's affairs. I don't need worthless worms like you wriggling into my graveyards while I'm trying to rob them. It's bad enough I've got to share this region with those... Oh, those harvest folk and make them pay rent. Now then, I could easily crush your skull until you'll slash and save you a spot in my cemetery. Or we can exchange favors. You do something for me, and I'll let you return home unharmed and without a word to anyone else. Your choice, Sheila. The snow woman paused. Her eyes fell on the amulet that dangled from Bones' neck. Hmm. Well, an exchange ain't an exchange without both people getting something. What are you getting in return? <laughs> oh, crikey! Aren't you a peach? I have a fondness for feisty girls. Ah, they just get my bones tingling with joy. Oh, it's a ripper! <laughs> ah, and since you wanted consent, I'm giving it to you now. Enjoy one night away from your wintry wonderland. Help me collect some souls. Stargaze with me. Maybe even... A little peck or two on the cheek. Or lips. Or both. Do we have a deal? Snowbell shivered at his words. She tried to hold back her disgust long enough to form an icy dagger behind her back. Her free hand circled around Bones' amulet. Caught by surprise, the old man's grin grew wider. Then he closed his eye, waiting for his reward. As enticing as that sounds. Snowbell brought the dagger out and cut the amulet's string effortlessly. Then she stepped back, playfully fiddling with the trinket in her hand. I think this'll be a better consolation. Bones' eye flew open what? upon Snowbell fleeing. Then he looked down at his chest, <gasps> shock washing over his face as he realized the amulet was gone. Get back here! Bones withdrew his shovel from the ground and ran after her. His rage was as quick as his pace, but for how long was uncertain. He needed the amulet back. It was his source of power and staying alive. Without it, he'd be turned to dust and he wasn't going to let some country snow gal take it from him. You pissed me off for the last time! Give me back my amulet! Now! Snowbell tried her best to outrun him, but could only go so far with the weight of her legs extending on her. With a last-ditch effort, she fired a beam of ice on the ground, causing Bones' feet to slip. He landed hard on his hands and knees. He tried to stand up, but his ankles gave in making him wince in pain. His eye widened in realization. No. Ah, 
You have no idea what you're doing. I need that amulet now! Give it back! Snowbell stopped near the border of the bedeviled forest. She looked back at Bones as he managed to stand up, keeping her distance. You need it to probably hurt more people. Why should I give this back to you? Because it's what keeps these old bones going. It gives me life and grants me mortality. Anyone would want that, wouldn't they? I'm sure you of all people. Suddenly, a ball of flame pierced from behind Snowbell. She narrowly dodged it, but it landed on Bones' shoulder. The old man fell and screamed in agony. <gasps> oh my goodness! What? What is- I'm just... burning! I'm literally burning, you idiot! Blimey bloody bollocks! You didn't have to do that, you crazy scarecrow! Scarecrow? <laughs> you mean- Don't move. Snowbell was startled by the sudden voice behind her. While her body remained still, she slowly turned her head to see a large scythe pointed at her back, along with a set of yellow eyes glaring at her. If you know what's good for you, you'll drop the amulet and leave. <sighs> with only a second of hesitation, the figure stepped into the moonlight. It was Hector Scarborough, a tall man made of straw and stitches, with a worn brown hat, a scarlet polo shirt, faded jeans, and scythe blades for fingernails. He lowered his weapon, but his cold expression remained on the snow woman. I told you to never come back. I, I didn't know I was near your home, but... Hector, you know this man? That ain't none of your business. What the Sam Hill were you thinking? Do you have any idea how dangerous it is to be out here? Especially with creeps like him stalking around? Excuse me. I'm right here! And need I remind you that you burned my shoulder! You could have gotten yourself killed! Or worse! He was gonna kill someone! I couldn't just stand by and let him! Stop thinking about other people for once in your life! Fend for yourself, dammit! It's the only way you can stay alive! <sighs> You need to go. Give me the amulet and stay where you belong. I mean it this time. And if you refuse, I won't hesitate to hurt or kill you. Don't make me do it, Snowbell. Snowbell's concerned and scared face turned into an angry pout, her eyes watering up at the harshness of Hector's words. Her grip on the amulet tightened as her hand shook. Sniffling, she took the amulet and shoved it against Hector's chest. Then she ran off with a sob. But before she crossed the region's border, she stopped for a moment to turn back to Hector, her eyes still tearing up. I don't know what's going on between you two, but I ain't gonna apologize for helping someone in need. Hector, you're better than this, even if you don't want to believe it. Hector watched her as she left, the same distant expression on his face. Then he looked back at the old man, still writhing in pain. With a sigh, he tossed the amulet on the dusty pavement. Bone scrambled on his hands and knees until he clutched it. Immediately, the burn on his shoulder faded away and his strength was restored. Oh yeah, that's the stuff, Ripper! Oh, quite a performance that was, Hecky. I had no idea you knew that girl. I don't. She means nothing to me. Keep telling yourself that. Because if you even dare to throw another fireball at me, I might change my mind about your rent. Y yes, sir. Good. Now, do me a favor and walk an old man home. Sheila really did a number on my ankle. Hector went over to help Bones, putting his arm around him. He took one last look at the border behind him. A twinge of guilt crawled on him, thinking about the snow woman. After a moment, he turned his back and helped Bones trudge back to the graveyard. Meanwhile, 
Snowbell made it back to Evergreen Town and was sitting by the frozen lake near her home. She had exhausted most of her crying on the run back, now having a calmer but still bitter feeling in her chest. She stared aimlessly at her reflection in the lake, her mind trying to comprehend Hector's connection to the disgusting living corpse. As Snowbell sat there, her friends Bernie and Al approached her. There you are, sugar. I was wondering why you got back here so soon. I take it they didn't have the produce we needed? Is something wrong, Miss Snowbell? Snowbell tried to stay quiet, but she couldn't repress her feelings any longer. She threw her arms onto Big Al and hugged him, sobbing softly. Bail, what happened? I don't like it when Miss Snowbell is sad, little sister. I don't either, Big Al. Shh, shh, shh. It's okay, Bill, honey. You can tell us what happened. 